Yo, what is up guys? I'm doing another highly requested video. This video was probably requested by over like 50, 70 people in the comments. And I actually wrote down um, some notes for me. This video is based on how I became a D1 athlete. There's a lot of ups and downs being a D1 athlete. I mean, more ups than downs, because that's why people work so hard to be a D1 athlete. It's definitely not easy to become a D1 athlete, but I'm gonna get into it with you guys. So if you guys really wanna educate yourself on how I personally, myself, what I went through to become a D1 athlete, maybe uh, other D1 athletes had something very similar with them. This is how I did it, and this is how I was raised to become one. Uh, my dad actually played professional football. Mike Michael Pittman, he played for 11 years. He won the Super Bowl also. My brother is actually in the NFL now. I get tips from him all the time, so I'm gonna share with you guys everything they've taught me and everything that I've experienced through the whole process. And if you don't know who I am, I am Micah Pittman. I go to the University of Oregon. I had a total of 32 scholarship offers. I had Alabama, I've had Georgia, I had LSU, I had Oregon, Ohio State. Any big name school you can think of, I had. Like, I'm not even trying to come off as any cocky or anything like that. I just wanna help you guys understand how I received these offers and how Nick Saban noticed me, how like Kirby smart how Mario Cristobal how all these big-time head coaches noticed me when I'm all the way in California I'm just gonna get into it man and I'm really excited to kind of share with you guys what I've been through a lot of ups and downs like I said first thing uh, was a down in my D1 process was definitely my friends lost friends jealousy stuff like that when you're successful you know not everyone's gonna be in your corner man I had a big group of friends um, they did some shady stuff to me I lost them I, I gave up on those friends I decided to focus on football, man. I don't really go party too much. Uh, they were big partiers and stuff like that. I always turned down the offer. I always wanted to work out. And those friends that are maybe watching this video know that I turned down parties to go work out or to just sit at home and avoid a problem, man. Anything at parties, you know, anything can happen with a mistake, with alcohol and stuff like that. So um, I always avoided that issue because my pops and my, my mom, they always raised me to be cautious. You don't want to make a mistake that you're going to regret for the rest of your life off of one thing you wanted to do for five seconds. Now you're in jail and now you have to suffer the consequences. If you have a history of being in jail, you're most likely not going to be able to be a D1 athlete. Not, not many coaches are going to want to pick up a guy who has problems like consistent problems and I lost friends because of stuff that happened and that's why you guys only see Jad really like Jad is my go-to friend man outside of football like I have I have buddies here and there on my football team because those are my guys and these are my enclosed people and I and I love hanging out with them but at the end of the day if I had to rely rely on somebody to have my back it would be Jad I have all these followers I have all the social media stuff I have everything and I have one best friend I don't think you guys should value so much much of I guess you could say friendships friendships are amazing if you have that day one dude like I have Jad keep that you want to keep that you want to have someone who can support you you want to have someone to come to your game you want to have a motive I have a motive for football not just my my best friend Jad it's my mother it's my dad it's my baby brother it's my older brother even though my older brother's making millions of dollars in the NFL he's accomplished so much I still want to make him proud of me. I want to make my dad proud of me. I want to make my mom proud of me. I want them to call me one day and be like, son, you did it. Like, I'm so proud of you. That's a dream come true in my like eyes. That's why I work so hard. When I wake up, I'm like, bruh, I'm tired. Like I'm human guys. I don't always want to go work out and do football stuff. I'll be honest. Like I wake up mad sometimes. I'm like, bruh, I don't want to do this. But I also wake up thinking my mom, I think of my dad. I'm thinking of my little brother that someone who has to look up to. I'm also thinking of, thinking of that Tesla that I want to buy. So much stuff that goes through my head in an ulterior motive for football. I love football, but there's so much other stuff that comes with it that's not easy. For example, workouts. For example, friends, parties, drugs, alcohol. Fun fact, guys, I swear on everything I love, I actually have never drank alcohol or have smoked ever in my life. My dad kind of put the fear of God in me too, honestly. My dad uh, <laughs> told me if I ever came home smelling like that, I'll get a butt whooping in. Uh, for you guys who don't know, my dad's a pretty big dude. So I wasn't gonna sit here and try my dad, so I respected my father, I, I just listened. It's a lot of things kind of wrapped around into one, so that's probably one big aspect of things. Another down, man, is uh, I lost my grandfather. 
This is why I'm all trying to go to D1 college. I'm trying to make my family proud. I'm trying to do something uh, with my life. And I don't wanna be a guy who can't do anything, who wants to rely on people, who's always asking for money. I can't be that person. I lost my grandfather um, when I was 16 years old. So I lost my grandfather when I was 16. I actually went to Oaks Christian, a school that kind of really frustrated me. And I'm gonna be on completely honest with you guys. My grandfather passed away, he had a heart attack. I went to the funeral and I went there for a whole week, stayed a whole week up in Indianapolis with my mother's family. And my mom needed me to be there for her. My mom was heartbroken. My mom also lost her younger brother, which is just terrible. I can't imagine if I lost those two people in my life like my younger brother and my father I would be devastated so I need I knew I needed to be there for my mother and my dad also told me I needed to be there for her. Um, I come back boom literally I get smacked in the face with a bunch of homework smacked in the face with everything mind you I told Oaks Christian about all of what's going on so this was like a very hard time for me and I ended up doing all the homework then they said something was similar to another student's like work but the tutor confirmed that i did it with her so instead of them giving me zeros they gave me 50 percent on all the assignments and if i redid them all again i could get 100 percent. so this is where it's another down in my life i just lost my grandfather my mom is really upset and now i'm trying to deal with college football coaches texting me calling me hitting me up like mike why aren't you answering the phone they don't understand what i'm going through and then oaks isn't helping me i was just getting destroyed left and right. I couldn't really fathom what was going on. I mean, I was 16 years old. All these, all these letters, all these colleges contacting me and trying to get to me. Like I said, Oaks was no help. It really kind of tore me down. And I ended up leaving Oaks Christian. My mom and dad thought it was best for me to leave because of the way they handled me. I ended up transferring to Calabasas and probably one of the best moves I've made. Welcome you in open arms. Shout out to Mrs. Foss. She's a principal at Calabasas. She welcomed me in. I told her my situation. She felt completely sad for me. She was like, I wouldn't have made you do any of that stuff and all that, like all of what I had to go through. And yes, even though I miss school, you do need to make up assignments. And that's exactly what I did. But the problem was, is they tried to make me redo weeks worth of assignments after I just turned it all in. So I was like, no, there's no way that's happening. So I tried to communicate with the counseling and all that stuff at Oaks and they said, they said, no, you're gonna redo it. I said, okay, I, I don't think this is the right school for me. You guys are trying to make a statement out of a football player. When I left Oaks Christian, I had six or seven scholarship offers. Then I go to Calabasas. I already have my name out there. I broke a California state record for the most receiving yards in one game, which is 380 receiving yards on 13 catches, and I had two touchdowns. Um, we played against Marietta Valley and we lost that game actually. I kind of put my name out there already. You need to perform, you want to perform. So I ended up getting probably 18 scholarships in the off season. Guys, you want to post your offers. No matter what school it is, no matter how lame you think it is, you want to post the offers because other schools noticed that. As soon as I came out with the top five and Oregon was in it, Washington offered me. Washington wanted to compete with Oregon because they knew if Oregon picked me up, they would have to face me. So they wanted to try to steal me from Oregon. So that's just kind of how it like relates. When I got offered by Alabama, Georgia offered me right after. It's kind of like a domino effect. And then LSU offered. And then it was just all these big schools, man. I wanted to tell you guys my story because I feel like maybe I can relate to you guys. Maybe whatever you're going through, whatever is hard for you now, just think of a bigger picture, guys. Like I've gone through so much before I have gotten here. I've lost friends. I've lost family members, I've lost girlfriends. Guys, even girlfriends, man, I know, like, I wanna, like, get personal with you guys. For girls, man, you don't want to, like, buy into them, like, so much where it's distracting you from what you're doing. And this is what I had to learn, man, personally. Like, you want to focus on yourself. It sounds selfish, but it's not. If you have a goal in life, you need to attack it 100%. Yes, it's cool to have a girlfriend, but you wanna make sure you're still putting in the work. You wanna make sure your game, your grind, a priority. You wanna get yourself better, and then your girl can be there an hour, two hours later, however long your workout is. And she'll be there for you if she really likes you. She'll understand what you're going through. And if she doesn't, then you have to leave her because you have a goal. I believe she really loves you. She'll stick with you no matter what it is. I've seen guys just firsthand just blow scholarships, just give up like on football. I couldn't fathom that. Like you're getting a free education, you're getting a stipend to take care of yourself. Mind you, our stipend is 
is nothing. I don't want to like say we're getting paid a lot. We're not getting paid a lot. It's hard to be a student athlete. We don't have a lot of money and we live on a budget on a day-to-day -day basis. There's times where I have to eat McDonald's because I don't have enough in my bank account to go get myself a burger. Yeah, I just wanna, I just wanted to address that so we don't get a lot of money. But I'm saying your free education is a big deal. But I came up in a different way, man. My dad raised me to be a hardworking young man. As an athlete, if you really wanna become D1, you have to be competitive. If you don't have a competitive arrogance, if you don't have a competitive ego, I'm telling you, you're not gonna make it, man. And I don't care what anyone tells me. So you gotta wanna win every game you play. You want to be the best at the position you're at. It's possible, man, like, just be like the go-to guy on the team. You want the coach to have faith in you to catch that game-winning touchdown. You don't want that coach to have faith in another player. And that's just real talk. Like, I'm being honest with you guys. On fourth down, I want the ball because I know I'm gonna catch the ball. I trust my God-given ability that I will catch the ball every single time. I have that competitive arrogance. I have that competitive nature where I'm talking to the quarterback, dude, look at me on fourth down. I don't care what it is, double coverage, single coverage. I want the ball. Like, I'm going to catch it. We're going to win this game. I'm going to help the team. I'm going to provide. It's not like, oh my God, it's fourth down fourth and five i don't know if i want to catch the ball no bro that's how you stand out man and that coach relies on you and then you become reliable for your quarterback that's a big big deal and this is just receiver talk for linemen or for linebackers you want to make that tackle you want to make that block to win the game like you want to make these things it's not just receiver i'm just talking receiver aspect so i mean you guys want to be that person and you also want to take tips you want to watch film you want to watch people that are in the nfl my favorite guy to watch is Devonte adams the man is an animal and i still can't get his moves down even though they're so so sudden and easy i love watching Devonte adams i love watching steve smith i watch professional athletes all day every day i play video games and watch professional athletes and do homework and edit youtube videos so that's it but like that's all i do i don't i don't need to go party i don't need to go do drugs i don't need that like what is the point of that it's not cool to me man i really don't understand it yeah it's good to have a fun time sometimes but like if you're consistently doing stuff man i, I just can't under understand why people would you also want patience man if you don't have patience i don't think you can play football like honestly, um, and this is what I struggle with. I'm gonna be 100% honest. I'm a guy who wants to play right away. I'm a guy who wants the ball right away. I'm the guy who wants to get that touchdown on the first drive. I'm a guy who wants to like do all these things and I struggle with it. I'm gonna be completely honest. It's very frustrating for me sometimes when I'm a wide open receiver and the quarterback misses me. I get, I get, I get really frustrated. I'm human guys. Like I'm, I'm not perfect. So I'll be honest with you. Even patience with offers. I didn't get an offer my freshman year. I played varsity my freshman year, but I did not get one offer my freshman year. I saw my brother shine. I saw my brother get all these offers. I come in my sophomore year with that competitive arrogance, that competitive ego that I'm going to be the best receiver on this team. No one's going to beat me out. No one is going to be the reliable target except for me. We had a transfer come in, I didn't care. I literally said, I don't care who he is, I'm going to be the receiver. I'm gonna be the go-to guy, period. And that's what I became, and then I ended up getting offers. If you make plays, if you put up stats, if you put up film, I promise you, there's a 99% chance you won't be missed. Social media is the biggest, biggest recruiting factor. You wanna have a Twitter, you want to be posting stuff, you want to allow uh, coaches to DM you. You're never too big time for a school, ever. You'll never be too big time for a school, I don't care who you are, five star, one star, you're never too big time for a school. Any offer you get, be grateful, period. Like what they give you and what is offered, and what I have experienced, during this D1 whole life is more than a blessing. And I'm more than grateful. Another one, man, it, what I would say is dedication. If we're gonna be honest here, I'm not a biggest fan of school. I don't really like school. Not that many people like school, but for the people who love school, man, shout out to you, dude. It's hard for me to like it. I understand the value of school. I understand I gotta get my homework done. I understand I need to maintain a GPA so I can stay on that football field. You can ball on the field. I've seen it. I've seen it, guys, like with my own eyes. You can ball on the field, and then this man has a 1.9 GPA. 
coach throws it, throws it to the side. I can't, I can't offer this guy. How am I gonna rely on him to maintain a GPA in college if he can't maintain it in high school? And then to wrap it up, man, those setbacks, man. What I am going through right now and what I have learned during these setbacks, I've never really been injured. I've never been really out. And I've done like things that I could play through and be able to fight through the pain. Broke my collarbone, broke my arm. Huge setbacks that I've never faced in my life before. But what I've gone through, man, is definitely something to really look back on, man, and just think about my mental. To say I, I wasn't close to being depressed is a lie. I was really upset. Uh, I hid it from my family. I hid it from everybody. I'll be honest with you guys. I felt like I kept letting my family down. I called my mom. I called my dad. Just told them, I'm sorry. Like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I keep getting hurt. My dad always like tells me, man, it happens, son. And I get hard headed. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I get hard headed. I think I'm invincible and I still do. I don't think I can get hurt, but like I do. And it's just, it's crazy um, to think about it. It's a reality check, man. I'm sitting in my room like this for four weeks straight, watching my teammates play football on live television. You can't tell me you wouldn't be depressed or you wouldn't be upset about that. No matter how strong-minded you are, I believe I'm one of the most strong-minded people on this planet Earth. When you hit that setback, man, it it crushes you, especially for how hard I work. Guys, when I'm telling you this was my schedule, I woke up at five in the morning every day during fall camp. I would get to the facility at 5.30. I would watch film till 6.30. I would get ready at seven. I would get rehab because the facility opens. I would get rehab at 7.15. Then after I got done with rehab at 7.15, I went back up to watch more film with the team. And then I went to practice. And then after practice, I went to school. And then after school, I went back, watched some more film. I don't want them to see you down. Like, how am I gonna be the one that my little brother can look up to? How am I gonna be the cool little brother that I am to my big brother? How am I gonna be fun if I'm over here sitting and crying about my injuries? I had so many whys, but there was no reason to sit there and reminisce on what has happened to me. I'm going into a mode where it's go time. There's no time to complain about what has happened to me in my past. I want everything back that I should have got last year. I kind of broke down as much as I could. Education, dedication, sacrifice, strong suits, competitiveness, everything that I kind of went through in my life, man. And my dad and my brother are just great examples for me to uh, live through. So I really appreciate you guys watching this video, man. We have grown so much on YouTube. We're about to hit 20,000 subscribers and we've been on YouTube for a month and a half. You guys are awesome. Make sure to like and subscribe, man. I really appreciate you guys. Man. Without everybody watching this video, without everybody, without me having fans, man, I wouldn't really be nothing special, I guess you could say. Um, you guys make me feel good. You guys uh, make make my days and stuff with you guys' compliments and stuff. So, And make sure to follow me on Instagram, at Micah Pittman. So, thank you guys so much for tuning in YouTube I'm out make sure to stay tuned for the next video let me know man what you guys want to see I really appreciate the love guys peace